Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12 and this is a tips video working with compendiums. So we're going to cover two things in this uh, video. Very briefly, what the heck is a compendium and how do you use your own stuff? And much more useful probably is the next step to that is how do you back up compendiums so that you can use the same compendium in multiple different game worlds for you and have a copy that you can store offline um, and keep it safe so you can back it up somewhere else in case everything goes wrong because yeah you can reinstall foundry you can reinstall all of the mods and stuff but what about your precious items that you spend hours and hours customizing and stuff they may all be gone well we don't want that so let's back them up all oh, right so uh let's start off with what the heck's a compendium you probably know this uh, top right of my foundry screen on my menu there I've got this little compendium packs icon and the good chance are that you've got something in here already now this video while I'm doing this in the D&D game uh, this is agnostic and uh, in other words regardless of your game um, that you're playing in foundry you can follow these steps to do it it's just I happen to be in D&D all right, so you'll have something like, if you're in D&D, &D, you'll have the SRD. If you use D&D uh, &D Beyond Importer, you'll have the D&D &D Beyond folders as well. You may have other things. You may have already got the only one, the ones you've already created. So I am going to start off by just going through and creating a new compendium. So I'm going to click Create Compendium, and I can give it a name for my stuff. Uh, I'm going to call this my my uh, my spells okay because I'm going to customize a whole bunch of my spells with the automated animation that goes with them um, the way that they work maybe I'm doing a lot of automation work using MIDI QOL and, and stuff like that and I'm making changes and I want to make sure I'm using my version of the spell now spells are a type of item so spells, monster abilities, um, your long sword, they are all items. If you're not sure whether it's an item, let me just click create. I've created my compendium. Compendium. If you click on the items tab, if it appears in here, it's an item. So I've got rations in here. I've got uh, the Lightbringer weapon that we made and Hugh the Battle Axe. I've got the Levitate spell is an item. I've got the Bless spell. I've got my Amethyst treasure. Just some random things in here, really. Um, for this purpose, it doesn't matter that they're random. But we did work on Hugh the Battle Axe plus one. We did work on the spell Levitate. Um, and I, I, let's say I want to transport them to another world, or at the very least want to have quick access to my stuff, um, rather than pulling stuff from the SRD or the, the core rules, whatever it might be for your game world. So I've created this. Um, it's called My Spells. Brilliant. And if I open that, it's got nothing in it. But I can drag in any items, because this is an item one that I want. I want my version of Bless in there. I want Levitate in there. And that's my only two spells that I want. That's now a compendium that I have. So rather than going through my big list of those things, I can just go, right, my spells, here they are, bosh, ready to go. Yeah. And I could create a different compendium uh, called My Magic Weapons. I mean, be more inventive with your names, right? <laughs> Uh, and that's going to be another item one because I can have more than one item one. And in my magic weapons, I'm going to put, bring in Hugh the Battle Axe and Lightbringer. I don't have an image for it, but it doesn't matter for this purpose. I'm going to bring those magic items in. Easy peasy. I've now got two compendiums. And of course, what I could do is create a folder called items for my items, whatever it might be. And then I can drag those compendiums into there if I want to. And now I've got my compendiums nice and easy. Same way that the SRD is into folders, which you've then got a folder for character features. Then you've got the individual uh, compendiums themselves. So I can build up to keep this a bit neater. I can put all my stuff and go, right, that's my stuff I need for my game. And it might be that you have these themes. You might have a compendium that you use for horror games. You might have a compendium that you use for, um, I don't know, you're playing Dark Sun campaign and you want a whole theme around, you know, sort of more deserty, the way spells 
work, their animations, whatever you choose to do, you can do that. Now, of course, one of the things that you might choose to do with spells is if you choose to go to that level of customization with things like animation, you may even get to a point where individual characters have specific unique animations or ways that their spells work. So you could have a folder for uh, Johnny's spells and Simon's spells and Sarah's spells and you're dropping in their unique type of that spell in there. So if anything happens to their character sheet, you delete their actor or you move to a different game world, you can import their specific spell set with you. You could do that. But the point is, we can put stuff in compendiums, right? So that's great. That's basically compendiums uh, of how we can put stuff in there, easy to find. Sometimes it's just useful for reordering stuff. Brilliant, I've got my items. Right, but if I go to another game world, you pop over here, let's go into our automations one. Um, I've done all that work and I want to bring that stuff into this game world. Oh, I've got test spells there. Um, my folder's not here. My items aren't here. Oh no, I've got, that's a different version of Levitate. <laughs> that's a different version of Lightbringer. The one we were looking at was Lightbringer too. But I haven't got access to those. So I can't bring them between game worlds in that way. So that's what we're going to look at. So that's the first part of the video done already. The, the next part of the video, we're going to look at how can we create those compendiums as a module that we can install or specifically on game worlds. And it's not that difficult, which you'll be pleased to know. Let's go to return to setup. So effectively, what we want to do, instead of creating a compendium, we want to create a module that we can install on other places. So let's go to our add-on modules. Um, and how do we create a new one of these? Because that's what we want to do. Cog icon here. And when you hover over it, it does say create module. Let's click on that. So we're not doing this within the game world. We're creating the module from just within Foundry. Now we've got some basic details here and we start off by giving it a name. So I'm going to call mine CG, uh, CG pre-animated uh, items. Okay, that's what I'm going to call. That's going to be the name of my module. That's what it's going to say in my module list. Now, this next one down, this package identifier, this is really important that you understand what this is. This is the same name I just typed, but notice there's no spaces. Those spaces have been replaced with hyphens, and that's really important because you can't have spaces and special characters in the package identifier. And this package identifier needs to be absolutely unique because if you have two modules installed that accidentally have the same package identifier, it won't know which is which and it will get its knickers in a twist and you won't be able to load any. So let's say, for example, I accidentally use the same package modifier as automated animations. How does Foundry know what to load for which module? It's going to get its knickers in a twist. It's not going to work. It's going to fall over. So make sure that that is unique. Now, you might make it unique by, uh, for example, I put CG before mine. How many other modules? I've not encountered any other modules except ones I've created that have CG at the beginning. So I don't need to have that in there. I could just come in here and go, that's my unique identifier. It's going to be CG pre-animated items yeah so i could have my package title because i don't need cg in my package title i know what it is alternatively i might want to go hey i'm going to call my package a1 pre-animated items because when i look in my mod list where is a1 going to be it's going to be right at the top in it it's going to be right at the top in fact actually it's going to be just but after 5e stat block importer <laughs> this is alphabetical so think about it you don't want to be fiddling around changing this later if you can help it so have a little think what you're going to want to call it if you're planning to back it up you want to be able you know you might have several backed up so you want to be able to go oh, i know exactly what that is um and again if you're if you're having different compendiums for different themes for example make sure that's obvious for you get it right now you'll save yourself headaches so my package title here is going to be different in fact, I'm going to call it 1A, 
just so it definitely appears at the top of the list. <laughs> um, so that's going to be called 1A pre-animated items. The package identifier that Foundry uses in the background is going to be hidden. This is the very first version, so this is going to be version 1 of it. So later on, I might add more to this, I might update it, and I might want to make sure that I've got, oh, that was the original one I did, and this is the updated one, but I want to keep the original one just in case something goes wrong. So we're going to be able to update that version number as we go if we need to. I'll show you how to do that. Um, there is an opportunity to put a website URL. So if this was a package, uh, a module that you were planning to um, share with people or to distribute widely, um, check the Foundry page on distributing modules. There are some rules and some instructions about how you do that as an official module, like Gambit's pre-made as an official module. Um, or if you're just sharing it amongst a couple of mates, there are some instructions what you need to do. But you might have a website where you go, oh, go read the wiki, we explain what's happening or something like that. Right. Description of the package. Well, if it's only for you, you might not need one because you know what the title is, but you can put in whatever you like here. Yeah, just a description. Compatibility is going to default to the version of Foundry you've made it in. As you can see, mine's saying, well, you made it in version 12, so it's verified for version 12, um, and you have to have at least version 12 for it to work. You probably don't need to change those because that's going to default to be whatever you're working on at the moment. Uh, what you might do, let's say version 13 of Foundry comes out, you probably want to check all your stuff works and you might find that you need to make some changes to your items and stuff and re-verify that it's now suitable for um, version 13. We are going to show you how to manually come in and change this stuff later. Right, that's basic details. Authors, do I want to put the author on? Yes. I can put in the name of the author, a Discord if I want to, an email address if I want to, a website link if I want to. I can put those things in and I can add as many authors as I want to. Um, however, I don't need to put authors on for this purposes, but you can uh, and I, I would suggest you do. Um, and then we go to compendium packs. So this is where we're going to tell it what compendiums this module is going to have. Let's click open. Pack number one. Well, this was my, what did I call this? I called this my animated items. So I'm going to have my module is going to be, for example, uh, I'm going to call this spells. So that's the label. It's just called spells. What type is it? Well, it's an item. So I need to select that this is going to be an item. Do I have a required system? Yeah, these items are for D&D. &D. You may have more than one game engine installed. So you're going to need to tell it Either, oh, this should this is for everything, or no, this is only for D&D. &D. If you leave this blank, regardless of the game system you're in, you will have it in your mod list to try and add to your game. So if you've created D&D &D items, and then you try to import it into a Pathfinder game, it's going it, it's, <laughs> it's to throw up in its own mouth a little bit, uh, and it's just going to give you has hassle. And it's also going to sit in that list where you don't need it. So uh, it's sensible if you create it for a particular game system to split, select what that is. Uh, we can actually add another compendium pack on here that I might call weapons. Again, this is items for D&D. &D. Um, now, I know we didn't put it in the title of this, but I'm going to have one for um, the summoned animals. And this is going to be actors for D&D. &D. Okay, good, I've got that. Uh, and the last one here is relationships. Now, you shouldn't really need to use this if you're just backing up your items. But what you can do is say, huh, you have to have the D&D &D in game system in here or it won't load that package. You have to have, and this is a much more likely scenario, um, where you might say you need to have, where is it, automated animations because that's what's driving this. Is it required or is it re recommended or is it a case of I know that it doesn't work with automated animations. You can tell it the conflicts. I'm going to say it's required. And actually what's really important for 
you know, if, for example, is oh JB two A. I uh, can say it's recommended. Okay, so I can put those in. So now I've got what it's called and what version it is, the people involved in making it, what the individual compendiums are going to be in this module, and if there are any requirements that I have for it. I'm going to take those off for the moment. I can leave that one on. I'm going to take those off for the moment um, for this purpose. Let's create that module. I now have in my list a new module called 1A Pre-Animated Items. It's right there. Bosh. We've done it. Cool. Let's go into our game world. Let's go into my testing world and join that game as the game master. Let's go to our manage modules. I have got nothing installed here, but I now have access to A1 pre-animated items. Woohoo! Let's save that so we now have access to that module. Okay, so that's the only module installed. And if I go to my compendium pack, Look what I now have. So I created that before, but I now have, in fact, I'm going to delete that because I don't need that anymore. Go on, bin. Um, I also don't need my magic items. Get rid of that. And I don't need that either. All right, so can you see the very small, the bottom left-hand corner of these three say 1A pre-animated items. So that's letting us know that these three spells, summoned animals and weapons are all part of that module pack. So what's in here? Oh, nothing. Oh, nothing. Oh, nothing. Because we've not added anything into this new module compendium. And in fact, let's uh, if I go to weapons and I go to my items and I want to chuck you in there, it's not going to let us. Because at the moment, these compendiums come in locked. You can see top right that there's a small padlock. We can't access them. And over here, it says on the top bar, just up here, that weapons is locked. So we need to unlock it. Easy. Right click, toggle, edit. Gives you a warning. And then it unlocks it. And now you can see this is unlocked. I can create items directly or I can create folders. So you might want to, within this weapons compendium, create folders for melee weapons, ranged weapons, magic weapons, whatever you want to do. So again, just think about how you want to organise. Right, so in this one, saying that, I'm not going to organise anything. I'm going to chuck that item in there that I've updated and made for myself. And it doesn't have to be stuff that you've chosen to update. It might just be, look, I just want to bring in... Um, we're playing Dark Sun. We're playing Dark Sun Realm and there's only particular items I want available to the players. Particular types of weapons. There are no, I don't know, well, Dark Sun, metal is incredibly precious if I recall the setting correctly. Uh, it's very difficult to get hold of. So you might say, well actually, I'm not going to have all these long swords and everything else. I want to use bronze long swords. So you might... It might be a normal longsword, but you want to use a different image. You want to call it bronze longsword or something like that because steel is just ridiculously difficult to get hold of. Um, but you might also want to have oh an obsidian longsword that you've made or, or wh whatever it might be. Whatever, you get the idea. Right, so we now have those in there. Brilliant. Okay, we can do that. So now every time I open my weapons compendium, I've got that fantastic. Uh, summoned animals, I need to unlock my summoned animals. Thank you very much. And then I can open that. And then for this one, I can drag in my summoned animals. What I can also do, we've just dragged those weapons. Because my summoned animals is very conveniently in a folder itself. If I right click on it. I get this little menu. So I'm right clicking on the folder. I can export the whole folder to a compendium. We get this lovely little thing here. So what is the destination compendium pack I want? Well, it's actually my summoned animals folder. Now notice items doesn't appear on here. Why? Because I'm exporting actors. So I only can export actors to an actors compendium. My summoned animals were set up as actors. Now it's going to try and merge this in with any other things already in here. So if you've got duplications, if I've already got a bear in here, what, what do you want it to do? 
are you going to merge by name and go oh hang on a minute or document ids etc so you, you need to be aware about the conflicts that could happen but i'm going to export there we go so it hasn't put the folder in but it has put everything from that folder in here so i now have two compendiums with my stuff in it that i may or may not have updated all right good i'm happy with that thank you very much so we can close those now uh, and we have our weapons compendium whenever we want it summon animals in this game world fantastic right i want this in another game world though don't i so let's uh, return to my setup let's go to our other game world now bearing in mind that we said that this module was for dnd only so it has to be a dnd game world um but in theory, if you don't set those game world things, you can transport a D&D longsword into Pathfinder. Of course, the stat blocks will be different and you might get some weird issues, but you might be able to kind of bring it in anyway, even if it breaks. Right, compendium packs. I've got that test spells. I don't want that. Oh, hang on. I do want to leave that because this is... this is. <laughs> I want to keep that for other purposes. Um but I don't have access to my compendiums, of course. If I go to my manage modules, I have my 1A pre-animated items. Let's save that module. Now if I go to my compendiums, oh look, I have my weapons compendium with my items. I've got my summoned animals with my items in. Now note that these come in, they are locked again. Okay, so all three of these are locked. I can absolutely look at those and I can import this wolf. So let's just check. I don't have a wolf in this list, but I can just right click and go, right, bring in that. There we go, that's my wolf. And I now have this wolf as one of my actors, complete with everything that was set up in the original game world. Uh, go to my items. I don't have Hugh the Battle Axe. I can import that and now I've got Hugh the Battle Axe and I can distribute that as much as I want to. I can, of course, just drag it straight from uh, from there. But this is locked so I can't add stuff to it unless I choose to unlock the weapons one. Boom, it's now unlocked. And now if I want to, I can add weapons... So Lightbringer and Lightbringer 2, I can add weapons back the other way. And this is now part of that compendium. Great, I've now added items from two different worlds into the same compendium. Right, let's go back to setup. Let's go back and just prove the point. We go back to our other game world and we log in here. Lovely, thank you very much. That module should still be installed. Open our weapons, Lightbringer and Lightbringer 2. So it's automatically saving those on the background as long as we pop them into the compendium. Um, it will automatically back them up. So that is how you can not only use compendiums to organize stuff within your one game world, but how you can then make sure that that is available for other game worlds and bring together all of your items from multiple different worlds into one central place that you've got control of. And again, you can do these, as many of these as you want. Because, let's say, we've done that and we've got, right, we've got everything for Curse of Strahd that we wanted with all those type of spell animations because we've done something specific. But now we want to do the same with Dark Sun. Well, guess what? We can go back to add-on modules and we can create a different module. Let's not call it A1 pre-animated items. We might call it something different. And we can use it and have a completely different compendium module. Nice, huh? So you might choose to have a module just for items, a module just for actors, a module just for soundtracks and things like that. Or you might choose to have one big module that has multiple compendiums in it with multiple folders. So all of your stuff is in one place. It's entirely up to you. Right. I hope that's clear and useful and everything else. Now the question comes, what happens when later on I update this and I want to look at version control and stuff or maybe... 
I want to edit this module because it's not oh hang on a minute that's not quite what I want now I, I need to I need to change the name of it or can I add an, add an extra pack in well let's have a quick look at that and this is where things might get a bit way a bit crazy in the brain for you um, but we can see so where am I let's start off with that find your foundry folder mine is in my D&D folder so all my foundry stuff is in there and you can go into the data folder in here there is a folder called modules this is every add-on you've got so we're looking at mine we can see that we've got about face active auras advanced macros yes some of these are redundant yes i haven't cleared them out <laughs> auto rotate is in there chris's pre-made is in there etc 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 uh, you can see I've also got Curse of Strahd in there. Uh, I've got my treasure stuff in there. I've got Summon Animals module in there. I've got a few bits already. But ours is A1. This is one of the reasons why I called it a, 1A because it's at the top here. Pre-animated items. This is our module. So we can open this and we can see all how our module is stored. Uh, in the packs you go, oh yeah, where's my weapons? Oh, because it's all stored in that format, it's not just pretty pictures and stuff that you might expect, hope to see. Why are we here though? Module Johnson. This is the important key file. So if we right click, we can open this. Now you can just open it with Notepad. Um, it's not the easiest thing to read. Uh, hang on a minute, it's got several versions open, which is one of the reasons I hate Notepad. Uh, you could open it in Notepad++, which is much, much better. I'm going to open it with Visual Studio Code because, go away, welcome, um, because this is easier for you to see what's happening because it color codes it and automatically lays it out quite nicely. So don't mess with this unless you need to, basically, because you could stuff up your whole module. Uh, one thing I perhaps should say before we do that is... Where I've got this, I can copy and paste this folder somewhere else as a backup. So I might upload this folder to a Google Drive or something. So I don't lose all of that work. Even if my computer explodes, I can reinstall Foundry. I can reinstall my modules. And then I can download my backup copy and pull in all my items. Okay, So it's a really good way for backing stuff up. Um, so yeah, you can do that directly with that folder. And if you are about to do something like, I'm about to update all of these and I want to back up my work, that's what you would do. Copy, paste, I don't, you might uh, you might compress it to a zip file, you might rename it, you know, create a copy and call it something else, etc. Um, but if we open that, um, that Johnson, we can see the core stuff inside here. Here is that ID that we created originally. So let's say you did create one. You go, oh no, I've accidentally got a conflict with somebody else's. You can come in and edit it here if you really needed to, but get it right the first time. I might want to change my title slightly. Okay, you can do that. Here's the version. So I've just backed up my module because I'm about to add a whole bunch of other things to it and improve it. Excuse the crashing noise. Um, so I've just backed up my 1.0.1 version of it uh, and I'm going to call this new version before I start adding stuff this is going to be 1.1 so I have access to multiple versions of it and also that is got what's going to show up in Foundry when I look at my module list so I'm going to know which version have I actually got installed okay so you can update that Here's this compatibility thing. So let's say you packaged all your stuff together and one of your friends is still on version 11 or they jump to version 13 first and you go, oh, can you check my module for you? They might be able to run through that and go, actually, do you know what? Everything works perfectly. And you go, oh, okay. Even though you're not on version 13 yet, you might say that you can, you might want to, you know, update that so that other people can use it even when you're at version 13. Or the other way around, somebody says, oh, look, I've installed it for version 11 and everything is perfect. Brilliant. Update that to say the minimum is 13. Uh, it's, it's 12. Sorry. The minimum is version 11, but it's verified on 12. So other people can access it. But again, the purpose of this is not about how to 
packaged for distribution to a wider audience. This is about really backing up your own stuff, uh, keeping track of your own stuff, perhaps sharing with a mate or something like that. You know, if you've got somebody else, another DM who works in Foundry and you go, I'll tell you what, if you do all if you do all of the animations and updates and everything for the druid spells, I'll do the cleric spells. And then you swap compendiums, right? You could choose to do that or something uh, to break that workload down. All right, so you can see here the systems where we said relationships. Remember that relationship section? We said you have to have D&D &D system in. Okay, so this is going to list any of the relationships. Now, if you made a mistake and went, uh, actually, do you know what? It doesn't need to be restricted to that. Uh, you could take this entire relationship section out. It no longer has relationships. Or it didn't used to be compatible with uh, Token HUD. But, but now, actually, Token HUD has been updated. It is. Well, you can remove that from here. It didn't used to require... Um, it didn't used to require uh, FX Master. Now it does require FX Master. You can come in, edit this, and stick that in. Again, that gets a bit complex outside of the realms of this video. Uh, we can edit the description because I wrote that rubbish in there. I now want to be better. Now this bit here that starts packs. Remember, we got to add what packs in, and we said, oh, we're going to add a pack in that we called spells. So between these curly brackets is all the information on one pack. It's called spells. The label is spells with a capital. Uh, it's in our packs folder, spells, and it's items. Uh, and also there's some ownership stuff about players can look at it, but they can't do anything with it. And it's for D&D, &D, right? And then we've got another pack here, which was we called weapons which is also items. So they're both items, but they're different packs. And then we had this pack here, which was we called summon animals, that was an actor type. So we've got three different packs. We know because that's what we created. What happens if we go, oh, actually, in this, in, version, in my version 1.1, I also would like to add in an NPCs pack. So that's another actor pack. Can you just add one in well hang on a minute let's do it so I'm going to take that block I can copy that and I can paste that in I've now got two that says summoned animals let's call let's change this name here NPC actors now we need to be careful notice the name is all lowercase no spaces nothing like that so we need to make sure NPC, no space, so I'm using a hyphen, actors. The label can have spaces, because that's what we're going to see. Uh, and where is this going to be saved? Well, it's going to need a path here. Um, so we're going to call this NPC actors. What type is it? Well, it's they are actors, so we're going to leave actors, uh, that as correct. And this bit can stay the same. Now, there is a mistake here that will not work. Uh, and one of the reasons why Visual Studio is really useful, it's given me a red squiggly line here to say there is a problem here. Note, this pack starts with a curly bracket, ends with a curly bracket. Before the next pack, there's this little comma. Okay, so it's basically, this is a list. It's a list of packs. Item number one, comma, item number two comma item number three no comma comma item number four and because the end of the list we don't need a comma so if you find things aren't working and you've played with this it is very likely that that's what you've done <laughs> okay so think of it just as if you were writing a a list of names you know name one comma name two comma name three you don't put a comma at the end so that's that's how that works um that's done we've just added an extra section in for mpc actors okay so remember we called this this was impacts mpc actors let's save this and come out of this and go into here there is a folder called packs if we open packs 
that's our spells, that's our summon animals, that's our weapons. We don't have a, we told it to use a folder called NPC Actors, didn't we? We haven't got a folder, so useful to go and just create that folder to make sure that matches. Oh, this is advanced stuff. We've started with really simple, then we've then gone to the middle, and this is much more advanced stuff we're looking at here. And yes, I know there's people like Ripper and Bugbear and Moto Moto kind of going, this is not advanced. For us, this is advanced, all right? <laughs> so let's go back into one of our testing worlds. Go in as our game master. And fingers crossed this works, all right? <laughs> Uh, I don't want to go that, come out of that. Go into our manage modules, just make sure that we have indeed got that installed. Now let's go and look, what have we got? We've got an NPC actors folder that we created. We've now got our spells, we've got our summoned animals and we've got our weapons. And look, we've not botched it up. We haven't lost anything from there, but actually we've manually for our version 1.1 we have created a new bit in here that works just like the others we can dump our actors in. And actually what I should have done is when we go to our manage modules, very small, if I bring this up, on the right hand side in this green box, verified package, that says 1.1.0. So we've managed to create our own module, add our own content in it, edit it and make it a new and update a new version of it we know how to back up each stage as we go we are now masters of our compendiums we can do what we like with it and yes absolutely i can not going to uh cuz i don't need to but and it's pointless but i absolutely can go i'm going to zip that uh whatever oh it's cuz it's open in foundry i can't edit it right at the moment um but I can zip that, I can email it to you, you can dump it into your modules folder. When you go into Foundry, it will go, oh, I found this in the modules folder. You can add that in and you'll get access to my compendiums. Now, obviously, depending on what the setup of these things are, you'll have to have a matching kind of setup for that, which is why when we build that original module, it's saying, well, hang on a minute, if you're using dynamic active effects or token effects or whatever it might be, if you're using that stuff on that actor or on that item, the person who's going to receive it at the other end also needs that. So that's why you can say, hey, you have to have this, this and this installed or your item won't work. You just end up with an item with no effects or whatever it might be. Whoa, so how are we doing? Are we still here? Are we still alive? I wonder how many of you managed to get to the end, either because you found it actually useful, or um, some of you might have dropped off kind of going, oh, that's just too complex, I don't need it. Um, have a play. Don't, you know, just play like I did. Don't do it in all seriousness. Create one, chuck some junk in there, put it in a new game world. Make sure you understand how it works. Go and, if you want to, go and do an edit on a version control. Again, do it on a junk one. It doesn't matter if you mess it up so that you know what you're doing. It's just a bit of practice. So when you do do it for real, if you need to, you get it right first time because it will save you so many headaches if you manage to just create it right first time. Oh, okie dokie. Right, so leave a like, guys, please. I appreciate it. This one took quite a lot of effort, so, um, you know, give, give me some love. I need a little pat on the head to tell me I've been a good boy, uh, just like everybody does. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know if this was useful for you. Do you use this? Has this helped you do something else? What are your ideas of how you might use this for your own games? What kind of stuff are you needing to back up? Is it basic stuff like weapons and things or are you doing something more complex let us know because we go oh yeah brilliant we get inspired by your ideas we are also at time of recording we are four subscribers away from hitting 1000 which is absolutely amazing so if you're one of those people watching this and you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button just before you do that go and check the video on the 1000 subscriber giveaway because that ends as soon as we hit 1000 subscribers so uh, i'd hate for you to go oh brilliant i'm going to subscribe and miss it by one right <laughs> take care guys thank you for watching very much appreciate you and i will see you in the next one